Come on now, people. I've been telling you for almost two years now, you need to have a GNR TV. And now sports are back. Football is back. Now is the perfect time for you to get this if you don't have it already. And if you look on over here, as I've been telling you before, you get all these amazing channels, every single one of them, for $20 a month for two devices. And if you look on up over here, it's written. It's written everything you get with GNR TV. If you want four devices, $40. And there's some cool extras right here. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, get it. What more can I say? What more can I say? It's time to cut the damn cord, stop being ripped off by the dish and cable, and get this lovely thing we call GNR TV. Streaming done right. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Horror with Sir Sturdy. Tonight I have my guy, my guest. Tom, Tom, how you doing, man? I'm all right. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I literally just finished watching the movie maybe like 10, 15 minutes ago, if that. I was like, oh, shit. I'm running out of time. I was like, oh, shit, I got to watch this movie. And yeah. I how long it was, an hour and 40 minutes, hour and 39 minutes. But it's – I'll get right into it. Um, I remember as a kid renting this movie. Like, because uh, we would go through and rent, you know, one or two movies at the time. And it happened, you know, we happened to get to part three of Halloween, and we were so fucking mad as kids. Yeah. I you and everybody it. else. Yes. Yes. I hated this movie. I would love to meet somebody who really, who like, really liked this movie when they first seen it. That seen, you know, I've seen the original Halloween from one, two, and then seen this. And from like day one, they were just like, I love this movie. I hated it. All the way up until, I'll say about, shit, and I've told this story before, so I don't even know how many years ago it was. I don't know how many years ago it was, but I was with my wife, and I was in a horror Facebook group, and someone was talking about this movie, and they were just like, you should watch it as a standalone film. They said, for one, rewatch it, and two, watch it as a standalone film, and you might get a different appreciation for it. And so I told my wife that, and I did that, and I was like, you know what? If you watch this movie, ignore the title. It's a it's a fun movie. It's a decent movie. I mean, it's not the greatest, of course, but it, I like the concept. It's a really fun movie. It's an interesting idea. Um, I personally, I've never seen it before. I knew of it. I knew what it was. Mm -hmm. um, but personally, I didn't love it to be honest <laughs> yeah. like being brutally honest like i didn't i was just like this is a fever dream mm -hmm. and uh from beginning to end i was just like i can't i, can't, I don't know if i can do this oh man that, there, and there's nothing wrong with that though that's that's the thing i like is having the different opinions of it but i went into that like again when i first seen this as a kid not knowing anything about the movie just thinking it's another halloween movie i'm just like yeah you know Halloween three let's get it let's do this and then you see it and i'm just again you're so upset and disappointed but then again as i told you i like i like it now i'm not gonna say i love it i do like it i think it's one of those movies that people either love it or hate it though it's like i won't even say love it but it's like one of those movies to where you either you either enjoy it or you hate it i'll say or maybe not like it. I'll say you enjoy it or you don't like it. It's one of those, that's just, there's like no in between. Like it's, it's okay. And I think the biggest issue with it is the title. I really do. Well, I think that more than that, I, I think the idea for what they were going for with the Halloween franchise is interesting. And I, I wish in some alternate universe that we got it the way they intended it, that it was an anthology series of movies like the twilight zone was on tv 
but we didn't get that. We, we had Halloween and then we had Halloween two and people liked Michael Myers so much when John Carpenter sat down to write two, they were like, you've got to put him back in, you know? And they, he, he didn't want to do it. And frankly, I think that shows in the second movie too. Um, yeah. I, I, I do. Cause I, I've heard stories about John Carpenter, like sitting down and, uh, drinking whole six packs of beer and just writing the script. <laughs> It's just like, it's just like, I want to get it done. I want, I want this to be over with. I want to get back to what my vision was for this. Mm-hmm. And frankly, I, I do think the second Halloween does suffer because of that. Um, I know a lot of people like that one. It's not, but again, I'm not the biggest fan. Halloween isn't my franchise either. Nightmare on Elm Street's mine. Um, but Friday the 13th is mine. I know. I know. I know that about you. <laughs> See? <I> respect, <laughs> real quick though, I respect them all. I call those like the big three. And they're all fun in their own ways. They're all entertaining in their own ways. They all, they're all cheesy in their own ways. They all have their really great films, or at least the fan favorite films. Or even you could say your favorite films, and they all have that film that people are just like, I'm a fan of the franchise, so I'm going to watch it. But it's, it's, I don't hate it. I do like it. I do enjoy it. But it's not one of my favorites. Like, I'll throw it on when I'm watching the franchise. You know what I mean? And For sure. I feel like for, ho- I feel like for Halloween, this used to be it. But I feel it's either Resurrection or Six Curse, uh, the Curse. I actually have it. Or not Resurrection? Yeah, yeah Resurrection. That's the one with Tyra Banks, right? That's the, uh, yeah, with Buster Rhyme. Yeah, that was fucking terrible. I haven't seen it. I uh, I bought the big box set from Screen Factory uh, like two years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, some Best Buy had it, um, and I know those were hard to get, and they just had it still. I was like, well, I have to get that. Yeah, you do. And I've, I've pretty much watched a Halloween every year since. Um, and th- this was perfect because we were up to three. So th- it was time. <laughs> um, awesome. So I haven't seen four, five, six. I have seen H2O. It was actually the first Halloween movie I'd ever seen. It's not bad. No, it's, it's not. okay. <laughs> um, Don't mind it. But this one is just so, I think it's so it's so campy to the point where I'm like, it's, it's not quite there where I think it's so ridiculous that it's, it's super fun for me. Mm -hmm. It's just campy. I can see that. I can see that. Now, let me ask you this. If they did the whole anthology thing, I know you're talking about how this movie is real campy, Mm -hmm. but say they did the whole anthology thing. Would you like this movie better? You think, or Um, I don't know because I, I, I do think in general, it's not, a great movie. I, I could see it. I could see it still being like if they, if they did get their anthology off the ground, I could, depending on what the other ones were, Good this one. could still be like the, Oh, it's that one. <laughs> yeah. See now I, I did a podcast on this before. There was all, this is when I had my audio stuff, my with my guy, Matt, and we were talking about, this would be a cool, an- this movie right here would be a cool anthology if each of these three masks, which I really can't see the pumpkin too great, but if these three masks were three different, you know, if there are the three different stories in each anthology, like you got the witch mask, something happens with that, you got the pumpkin mask, and then the skull mask. I don't remember what we said exactly. I think that would be fun. And if there's a way where they all tied in together, you know, you know how some, not all, but you know, there's some anthologies how there's, you know, each of the stories, the three stories, they tie in together. Yeah, one way or another. So I mean, the masks can be one thing. The silver shamrock, which that that song gets on my wife's nerves. By the way, it's annoying. <laughs> it, it it is, and it plays a lot. Very repetitive. It's it's catchy though. It's one of those things where you gotta have it stuck in your fucking head for like a week. Like fuck, man. It's catchy the same way that like uh, JG Wetworth is catchy. You know. <laughs> yes. 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 And <laughs> real quick to talking about this movie right now you have the scene where the doctor picks up he's he's chilling with the chick you know the, the yeah the girl's father or the daughter of the guy that passed away that got killed earlier in the movie and they get the hotel room and like they didn't know each other which i mean it's, it's normal i guess in a sense of like being young going out to a bar and bringing a girl back home but this is thing this whole thing just seemed a little weird because it's like okay you just met again. People would just meet and they they hook up one night stands, whatever the case may be. But so you just met, and he's talking about like getting a different room to make her feel more uncomfortable. And she's like, "Where do you want to sleep?" And he's like, "That's a stupid question." They start kissing, 
<laughs> it's they, uncomfortable. I don't like that. <laughs> they, the funny thing is, the, the, listen, they sleep together, right? And then when she wants to go for round two later on in the movie, he's like, wait a minute, how old are you? Like, that should have been... <laughs> <laughs> that should have been asked before you even went on this trip. Like, it's yeah. part of the whole age thing. Like, listen, I know your father just passed away, blah, 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 blah. I'll help you, but I just need to know how old you are because if you're a minor, maybe we should reach out to your mother and let her know, da, 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 whatever the case may be. But he didn't ask this until after he's. I'm just like, that's that's a little strange to me. It's, it's I know, awkward. I know it's the it, 80s, and I'm not, I'm not condoning it by any means, but I know it's the 80s, so it was like a different type of thing. But she was like, I'm older than I look, which still didn't answer the question. I'm sure Absolutely. She, I'm sure she not. was legal. I'm sure she was. I mean, at least in real life, she was legal. In the movie, we don't know. But I, I'm just like, what the fuck? Like that? You're asking this. You already slept with her. And you're asking this now. Like, of all times to ask a question, that is not the time. Yeah, he did it out of work. You know, it gets, if you want to read into it, it gets creepier. Because, <laughs> like, <laughs> her father just died. This mm-hmm. man is significantly older. Right? Yeah. It's like, got some daddy issues going on right now. It's oh, yeah. uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. She definitely did. For sure. Did. And then the twist at the end with her. I don't know if we're talking about that kind of stuff. If we're going all oh, in. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. It made me, I, I was like, well, was she, was she like an android, whatever, robot thing the whole time? Or. Yeah. Or, or did she like die in the factory? And they, they don't really. They don't really tell you that. I I wish they did say something about that because they didn't touch on that at all. And I still think about that from. I would say from the first time I watched the movie, but in my adult years from watching the movie up till now, I still I'm like, so was she an android the whole time, or was she? Did she get killed in there, and then they just kind of used her body to make her an android? Like, what what the hell happened? Did he bang an android? Like, I'm I'm so confused. And my perverted ass was like, you know, you know the part where she's choking him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Arm ripped off. I'm taking that thing. I'm taking that arm home for my own pleasure. <laughs> and eat my meat. <laughs> it's, uh... it, it was such like, uh, like I said, I did have fun with this film. Nowhere near the greatest horror film I've ever seen, which it's, it's one of those things where it's kind of hard to say what's the greatest because you can say like a movie like, the thing or Jaws was an amazing movie, but I'll still come back and watch like some like Friday the 13th Nightmare on Elm Street or Halloween more just because I'm more entertained by it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like those are way better movies. Don't get me wrong. But these I'm just like drawn to like, yeah, I love the cheesy slasher campy shit. I love it. For sure. I feel like, well, the first Halloween I, I would argue is a classic and it is a film classic and it should be recognized as such not just a good horror movie um this one <laughs> this one is interesting if nothing else it is um it, it, it's an interesting time capsule and it's an it, it's interesting in that it's what could have been with this franchise um and, and it just it does make me wonder what it would have been like had the original vision uh come through I think about that too, but I mean, I guess the good thing about it not working is say they stopped at one and two and then did, you know, the whole anthology thing with different stories every year, or every so often, we wouldn't have had the legend and the icon of Michael Myers that we have now. Oh, excuse, me. Yeah, excuse me. We wouldn't have the legend slash icon we have now with Michael Myers. And again, when you talk about, well, this was, the original was from 78, so you could say late 70s, early 80s horror movies, horror slashers. The three that come up is Jason, Michael, and Freddy. So you wouldn't have, I mean, you would, not that you wouldn't have Michael, but I don't think he'd be as iconic as he is with those, without those extra mm-hmm. films, which might seem crazy because, I mean, as, as a whole, I enjoy the whole. I enjoyed the whole Halloween franchise as far as the original ones besides, I won't even throw in Resurrection, but I guess we want to throw that in there besides Resurrection. And then if you want to go with the newer two, I didn't, I mean, sorry, not the newer, the Rob Zombie ones. I didn't like the second one. I loved yeah. the first one. I like 2018. But I mean, as a whole, if we only got those two movies, like how popular, I'm not saying he wouldn't be, because then again, it could be a cult classic, but those extra films kind of help stretch out that legend of Michael Myers for us horror fans. Yeah. I, I think that the only pushback I would have 
against something like that is while Leatherface has a bunch of movies, mm-hmm. it, that first Texas Chainsaw is like the one. It's, it's one and two mostly. That's, that's what you hear people talk about. I agree. Like three, four, five, I don't even know how many there are. I think there's six, seven. I'm not honestly. I'm not sure because I know they did. Don't forget they did like remakes and reboots and all that. Yeah, stuff. I'm trying to include those. I, I think they did. I think they did four originals, two remakes, and I, then. I think the best ones is the it goes for me in this order. From the ones I've seen, it goes the original, the remake from '03, and then I'll say part two, and then. Uh, which one did I see after that? Then the rest I gotta like rewatch or watch again because like I seen the three D one. I wasn't really a big fan of that, but I, I think the re- I think that two, the two thousand and three remake, which we will go back to this movie, but I think yeah. two thousand and three remake was one of the best remakes I've seen. Texas mm-hmm. the remake. It was done so because I love how dark and gritty it still was. It paid homage to the first one in, in some aspects of it. But it still made it its own movie in, in a lot of aspects. It made it a lot more darker, a, little, a lot darker, a lot gorier, a lot bloodier to what I feel people around my age, which I'm 34 and I know you're in your 20s, and maybe even people around your age expected from the original. Mm-hmm. But they can only do so much because of um, the ratings and all that shit. I can't think of the, what it's called, but the, because of the ratings, they can only do so much. And it's just like that. I feel like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, though, it has some of the most powerful off-screen slash on-screen kills because you see them like swinging the hammer but you don't see them hitting i think it has i think that's the most powerful movie to actually do that successfully i can't think of any other horror movie off the top of my head that's done it to where you know it, it's insinuating somebody's getting killed but it's not really showing it i can't think of anything off the top of my head but i really feel like that one stand maybe because that one stands out so much to where it's like holy shit, that just happened? And then you gotta think of, what was it, 74 when that came out? Like, that had to be fucking crazy then. Yeah, well, actually, I'd, I'd say that the, the first Halloween is not very gory from my recollection of it. Good point. That's a good point. As a, um, fact, a lot of the Halloween movies aren't too gory. I thought in- this one was particularly gory, to be honest. Well... Like, in comparison. Let me rephrase. A lot of the Halloweens with Michael in it aren't that gory. From what I remember... <laughs> Besides, I think the newest one and Rob Zombies. I would throw two in there. I remember two being a little. Was it kind of? Lot, I, I gotta go back and. Remember. It was. It was more. Uh, it was more explicit for sure. Okay. Than the first one. Oh, the first one was real tame compared to a lot yeah, of yeah, yeah. actors. So, to, to yeah, to bring it back to Halloween, it, it is something that you can do successfully. Um, I feel like the. It's interesting, like the, the Halloween franchise. When you were naming all the movies, it's kind of a mess. You got that original, <laughs> you got that original uh, series, and then they rebooted with H two O. You got two in that. They 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 did the um, they did what Halloween twenty eighteen did before that. They just yeah. disregarded all the sequels. And I thought that was an interesting thing when people were talking about Halloween twenty eighteen coming out, disregarding everything. There was like this revolutionary thing that happened in the franchise history once before. You did. Um, so you have that, and then you have the Rob Zombie remakes. So that's another, like, timeline of Halloween movies. And then you have uh, then you have 2018's timeline with one in 2018, and now we're getting two more, I think. Yep, we are. We're getting um, Halloween Kills, and I forgot what the other one's called. Is it uh, Ends? Halloween Ends? Halloween, maybe that's what it is. Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends. And with those, I mean... I guess I went. I did enjoy the 2018 Halloween. I'm not even gonna lie. As did as did I. I loved it. I, I I it's actually one of my favorite out of the whole franchise. Like I don't know. I I'll probably put the original up top just because it's the OG. And then I have to rewatch two because I haven't seen it in so long. But part the 2018 is probably as of right now, from what I remember, it's definitely my second favorite out of the whole franchise. And I, I'm not including part three. Because I'm putting part three as like this own standalone thing. So yeah. Which, oh, and then you have part three's timeline too. So yeah, that. which has nothing to do with the movie. I mean, you mm-hmm. the move. The, the funny thing about part three, which I did kind of enjoy and like, is that they showed like the commercial for part two, or sorry, for the original, mm-hmm. and then they showed the parts of the movie when, yeah. when I was in the skull mask, sitting in that room, tied up, mm-hmm. which I thought was pretty cool, paying homage to it. I just, 
like you were saying, though, I kind of it's it's one of those things where I do wish we had that alternate universe to kind of see what that what would have happened if this was an anthology series, even all the episodes, because something like that could even last up until now. It's where you're just doing different type of stories and kind of just switching it up. Even if you go back to like the, the slasher stuff, but you're switching it up a little bit here and there. That's something I feel like could have went for years and years and years because again, you can have different producers like listen, this is the Halloween title. You come up with your own horror story, and we're gonna drop it in October. Mm-hmm. Let's say the last Friday in October, whatever the case may be. Well, it's interesting. It's almost that. It's almost like they were trying to do. We have like the Conjuring universe now. Yes. Like we have cinematic universes. Like that's the big thing now. Everybody wants a cinematic universe. It's almost like they were trying to do it before it was a thing. And but- in that way, it's it, it's revolutionary. Mm-hmm. It didn't work. <laughs> it did not work. It didn't. It, no, it definitely didn't work. And I feel this movie here, because they went so extreme with it, like being so fucking different. That, it's not a slasher. That too. But I mean, if it's a Halloween, if it's Halloween and it's a horror anthology, it doesn't necessarily have to be a slasher per se. But for if, sure, if I think if they made this movie somehow. And not by showing the movie here and, the, you know, doing showing the credits or, you know, the commercial play for it and then showing the movie a little bit in there. I think if they made it connected to the first two somehow, even if it had nothing to do with Michael Myers, but somehow making it connected, like in Haddonfield, something, just something. I think this movie would have got a better reception back in the day mm-hmm. to where they could have done a part four where it's completely, you know, where they could keep changing the story some. And just... Maybe even having like the legend of Michael Myers in this movie, but people are getting killed by something else, someone or something else that has nothing to do with Michael. But you have that legend in that, you know what I mean? You have that legend in that yeah. fear of Michael, but he's not in the movie. Well, it would depend on how you do it because we got a, we did get a Friday, Friday the 13th, part five, where. They kind of did something similar, and people did not like. People did not like that. <laughs> I loved it. I like that movie. I, I think, to be honest, again, it's a sidebar. Friday the Thirteenth for me gets good at part five. And hey, I mean, I love. See, that's my favorite franchise. So you already know, <laughs> Seven is my favorite out of all of them. But part five, like the more I watch it, I feel like the more I like it. And I think one of the reasons why I like part five so much. One big reason is because it's one of the ones that used to come on back when I was a kid, like on USA Network on Friday the 13th. That one came on a lot. I believe part three, maybe part seven. Like, there was a few that came on a lot, but that was definitely one of them, part five. And, like, I love – Reckless Reggie's, like, my favorite character. In the, besides Jason, he's my favorite character in the whole fucking franchise. <laughs> I'm just like, he's, he's just awesome. Mm-hmm. And he, he does what any kid would do, scream and run. Like, he doesn't just stand there. He runs. He tries to get the hell out of Dodge. But you're right. That that movie does have that thing where people are just like, fuck. But they did it right, though. Like, even if they had a, for this one, if they had like a copycat kind of thing for Michael, maybe, maybe, maybe not. But with Hot, or with Friday the 13th Part 5, they had the copycat killer, Roy Burns. And Tommy also had his flashbacks of Jason and like his, um, where he was seeing things, where he thought he seen Jason, which I thought was cool. I thought it was really cool, actually. And this, again, you see Michael Myers two times in the movie, and that's it. Versus if they would have had somebody who dealt with Michael, made it similar to Hot, or to Friday the 13th Part 5, made, just in the simple fact of the copycat, or just in the simple fact of people thinking that it's Michael and it's really not, even if it's not a copycat, but they just think that it's Michael. Mm-hmm. That may have got a, may have gotten a better reception, but at the same time, as you were saying, John Carpenter didn't want to do Michael Myers anymore. He wanted to do something completely different. That's probably why he went this route. He did this movie, right? I think he co-wrote it. I, I don't think he's actually credited in it, but I he had small. He had something to do with it. Yeah, and, well, he was definitely. Uh, I'll look up exactly what he did, but he was involved. He was involved. So did you hate this movie? <laughs> I didn't hate, that's such a that's that's a hard question. I didn't hate it. I'd probably watch it again, like you said, like if I was doing a whole watch of the franchise. Um, 
he, he produced the movie at the very least. Um, the thing I hear a lot with it is that it's a really good um, movie to put you in the Halloween spirit. I didn't quite get that. I, I, I didn't get that one. I feel like there's better, better movies for that. Chief among them, like Trick or Treat. Trick or Treat. I was going to yeah. say, that right there is the movie that will put you... Or the fucking original Halloween. Yeah. Halloween. Halloween. But I'll say Trick or Treat will really, really do it for you. For me, I love that freaking movie. Um, And like, yeah, Halloween or the original Halloween or any other Halloween except for this one, which this one I can see to an extent, to a small extent because of the Halloween masks, but it's still not like putting you in that Halloween spirit, I guess. It, it just doesn't feel... Like a Halloween, yeah. Like yeah, a- it didn't. It didn't need to. Did you know, it really? Other than the mess, it didn't really have to make it any other day. It doesn't have to be necessarily Halloween. I, I don't know. It was weird. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get the warm, fuzzy Halloween feelings. <laughs> trick or trick. I think trick or treat is the one that that does it for anybody who's seen that movie. That's a fan mm-hmm. of that movie. It's just like, but it's on Halloween. You have a bunch of crazy shit going on, and it's just fun. Or you have, like I said, you can go to the original Halloween. Um, I believe Terrifiers is on Halloween. I believe it is. I'm not 100% it sure. It is. The it girls is. dressed up. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that movie gives me a really good... It gives me. A, I love the movie. I love the fucking kills and everything in it. I don't know if it gives me a Halloween vibe. I know we're bouncing around. Nah. Um, maybe a little. Maybe, I, yeah, I, I'd maybe. honestly say maybe more than this, to be yeah, honest. Yeah. I mean, because Halloween, you got girls dressing up sexy dressing up like how they were dressed up i mean who doesn't go get pizza when they're drinking <laughs> yeah and i mean everything that happened yeah i could see that i could see that but this movie here man i think if you give it a second or third watch this is one of those movies where you got to give it a second or third watch i'll say and i want you to do this for me whenever you get a chance to give it two more watches right and i know you already know what happens in the movie but it's one of those movies where you got to just kind of turn your brain off and just sit back and enjoy it. This is this is that type of movie. Well, yeah, this is yeah, a movie I, I would be very interested to see um, how it is under the influence of alcohol. There you go. So <laughs> try that. I, maybe I will. I, I, I mean, if, if 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 you're a drinker or a smoker, try to be under the influence of one or the other. If you do that, of course, and you're of age, of course, which I know you are. But and then watch it again and you might get a different perspective of it well there are some things that are just better better that way it's, oh it's, sh- tr- it's true a lot of things food <laughs> i'm yeah well i'm actually really i got a i'm a big bhs fan oh nice and, uh, there's a company that puts modern movies like officially licensed releases of modern movies on a uh, bhs and they're actually local which is cool but i, I just got i just got mandy in the mail officially licensed vhs copy Did that so uh <laughs> so like we're gonna we're gonna see what that's like after a few uh a few drinks just you, just to see you, you it's for it's for science it is it's it's, it's for research purposes <laughs> horror research purposes but you did that right. on purpose because you know how i feel about nicholas cage <laughs> you just happen to have mandy just sitting right there <laughs> well yeah this is where it goes now we have a I mean, a lot of cool shit over here. I'm gonna. I have to show everything off now. We got a. I feel like you'll like this one the best. So this is the only one I'll show you. But that's fucking beautiful. Terrible. Yeah, it's really. It's be- It's great. That that company is is something. I love what, that. What's the company, by the way? Uh, Witter Entertainment. Witter Entertainment. Now, do they ship? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, uh, I think they're only online, actually. Oh, nice. And, uh, yeah, the guy, the guy from It's Super Nice, he's actually, like, from near where I grew up. And, uh, yeah, they, they, they make a great product, so. Nice. Yeah, see, I do, I don't have a VCR. I do kind of, what I miss about VHS, since you brought that up, is the grittiness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For certain, especially for horror movies, like and, and especially for the slashers, like the Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street, fucking um, 
Terrifier probably looks good on probably it's probably fun on VHS, but that's not it what is, I'm thinking of. Sure. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original. Again, mm-hmm. going back to that movie, that it, I again I've said this before and I'll say it again. I'm gonna say it now, I'm gonna say it again. I wish when you bought a Blu-ray or DVD, I'll say Blu-ray, I guess. So you know you can have the option to watch a Blu-ray. Or it comes a Blu-ray DVD combo pack, but you, they should have the option where you can watch it in the Blu-ray clarity or VHS clarity. But on that Blu-ray. And I only say that because growing up with VHSs, there'll be certain movies you'll watch a hundred times and after a while that shit just wear <laughs> that shit just wears out versus a mm-hmm. DVD or I'll say a Blu-ray. You can watch that movie a hundred times and you can take it out and watch it a hundred more times. Even streaming services should do that, I feel. Like, you know where you can buy a movie on Amazon Prime? You can buy yeah. it in standard edition or high definition. You should be able to buy it in high it should be the high definition standard slash VHS or high definition slash VHS. Some people might say, oh, that's stupid, blah, blah, blah. But there's a lot of people that love the VHS quality. There's a lot of people that just love collecting VHSs, but there's a lot of people that really do enjoy that VHS quality just because it just kind of brings you back to, if you're around my age and older, it brings you back to your childhood of watching these horror movies on VHS and it's not that clear. It's not that pretty. It's not that perfect how it is on a Blu-ray. And not to say that's a bad thing, because don't get me wrong, I love watching my movies on Blu-ray and with a crystal clear, perfect picture, but there's times where it's just like, I want to watch it where it's gritty to where it, <laughs> it's darker. It's It puts a little more fear into the movie because it's not so crisp. It's not. Yeah. So, it's like more rugged and rough. And hey, maybe you would like this movie better on VHS, man. <laughs> May, I mean, maybe. I, I'll tell you, uh, a movie that... I'm sorry, I keep sidebarring, but a movie that does look good better on VHS, I feel like. I just rewatched the first two Hellraisers. Mm. The first the first one especially I noticed um you can see a lot more in the high definition. So you can see maybe some of the wires for some of the stuff. Yeah. Especially I'm thinking of like that monster that's running down the hallway if you've seen it or remember. Mm. Um that it's a lot it, it's a lot better lit in hd like you could see a lot more stuff you could see further back the, because the depth perception is better yeah so you can you can like see that this is on a track you know and <laughs> that which i mean it nixes is that completely yeah which which is good i mean because you don't want that you want it to feel even though we know all these movies are fake you want it to feel as real as you can mm-hmm. i feel like vhs does bring i mean Obviously, for this is for the older movies. VHS does bring that. For the newer movies, of course, they know about all this other stuff, so they can kind of hide this. They can hide the bells and whistles and strings if they need to. Mm-hmm. But it's again, I would still love to have. Listen, people, make Blu-rays out there. Do this. I'm telling you, people will buy this. VHS people will fucking buy this shit. If it's you can have the option to watch it, so it looks like it's on Blu-ray or VHS, but it's on that Blu-ray disc, so we can watch it a thousand times like we watch our movies anyway. I really feel like that would be that would work so fucking well because who wouldn't want to check that out? Like there's certain movies you're just I mean, I would say do it I mean maybe maybe not for every movie, I say more so for horror movies. But there's certain movies you just want to throw in there. Like there's days where I want to watch Friday the thirteenth. I'm like, I wish this was grittier. Or, you know, whatever. Any of the other movies we mentioned, I'm like, I wish this was a little bit grittier. Like I love watching it because it's crystal clear. Oh, you can see this, this, and this. But at the same time, I missed when it was gritty, and it's just like you kind of got to squint sometimes. Like, wait, what the hell is that? Or you don't see certain you don't see certain things you would that makes the movie stand out more to where it's scarier. Like you don't see you might not see, for example, you might not see the killer as soon in the VHS as you do on the DVD because it's so or the Blu-ray because it's so fucking clear. It's like holy shit, I can mm-hmm. damn see the whole set like everybody. <laughs> I don't want to see that. Yeah, it's a. I love the format. I want to. I want to try to work in it more when making my own stuff. Uh, like I have the camera and everything. Like I, I want to. I want to make more stuff with a VHS camera. Now, okay. Quick question with that: would, Is that something you would? Um, which we can get wrapped up in the next few minutes. But was is that something that you would want to, like, say, put on the YouTube or whatever? If you were- yeah, for for sure stuff like the, you. I, I know how to. Um, digitize stuff like that so then i can work with it in my editing programs and release it digitally but still have that aesthetic like we're talking about oh that that i i I like that man i I love that i would love to 
I hope you do that soon because I would love to see that. I would it's love. yeah, it's just as to to me that format is just as interesting as like film formats. So like I, I've worked a little bit with sixteen millimeter film. Mm-hmm. It's VHS yeah, is just as interesting as that. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, yeah, man. Again, I gotta congratulate you on gra- the while wow, graduating. Thank you. And like doing. You seem like you're doing what you want to do as far as, like, I don't know what you do career-wise yet, like, right as of right now, mm-hmm. career-wise, but I like how you're steering in that direction, which I won't mention too much because, you know, we still spoke behind the scenes. But I like the direction you're going to where you're still sticking to what you really want to do and sticking to your dreams, even though if you have to work a nine-to-five to take care of your stuff. But you're yeah. still like, this is my passion. I want to go with this route. And you're going to make some dope things happen, man. I really do feel that. I really I- feel a lot. Well, thank you. I do appreciate that. I hope I, I hope I can, uh, I, I like, you know, I could have, I don't know quite how I want to work in this field yet. Um, because I could try to go that traditional route and like move somewhere and work, um, in production. And th- that's probably the safer way to be honest, but I, I do love this independent scene. So I think I'm just going to mess around here for a little bit, see what happens. Yeah, there's nothing wrong. I mean, you're young, though. You have time to where you can kind of mess around. And I know you're, like I said, again, I know you're working and stuff. So you have time to kind of see what you really want to do. In the independent scene, honestly, especially with this whole COVID thing, I feel is the safer route right now because you don't need, say, I don't know how many people are on set for a big production, but you don't need half as many of those people. So that mm-hmm. right there can help. You can do, you could like, there's a lot of things you can do with the indie scene. You can do with a handful of people, you know, right. I mean? and then just kind of have your vision for stuff. Like really have a hundred percent your vision. There's nobody saying like, Oh, Tom, no, you know what? I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. What you should do right here, put a big explosion, put some titties here and just change this whole thing. You might, let me just write it and I'll give it back to you. And it's like, yo, this mm-hmm. is my fucking movie. This is my script. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's yeah. And, to be honest, like some of the some of my favorite movies started out, or um, some of yeah, some of my favorite movies are independent. One one of my favorite movies of the year was uh was Host. If you saw that on Shutter, yeah, that was pretty good. That movie, yeah, man, that's that's gold standard right there, in my opinion. And honestly, just from the conversations you and I have had, I can see you doing something to that level, if not better. And I say that because. Host, I had fun with. It. I thought it was good. It could have been a lot better. I, to me, it could have been better. But you, I, I know you can say about any movie, but I just feel like um, I don't know. I just, I just feel like the way the movie went. I thought it was very. It was way better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was way better for than sure. Be. I loved how like the just the simple things like um, the, you know how they use like zoom for the credits, like when the movie was going off. Yeah, like, yeah. Well. That, that was, was something that was crazy because I, w- I was watching and I was like, why the fuck are they showing all these names? I don't understand. And I was like, oh, it's the credits. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, what are they insinuating right here? And it was just the credits for the movie. Which was very smart. And I'm yeah. just, that, that simple stuff like that I thought was cool. But again, just from the conversations you and I have had from ScareCon on until just random conversations after the con, I think you could do something like that or better i think you could do better than that honestly because i just feel like the way your mind works and how you really do love and enjoy horror even if you were to do something similar like just say if you use that similar thing to where you're doing like a zoom type of movie i feel like you can come up with i feel you can come up with a better story than that and that's not shitting on that movie that's just saying like from what i know what you what i think you can do what i know you can do well thank you i appreciate that that's very kind it's just having like the, I understand it's having the time. Time is a huge thing. I'm not mm-hmm. even talking about finances, but just like time to put something together and then time and to get people together, X amount of people together. Even if you're doing it, social distancing and all that, you still need time for all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm very, very excited for what you have coming up, what you're going to be having coming up when you do, you know, have stuff coming out and stuff. Cause I do think you're going to, again, I think it's going to be good, man. I think it's going to be really good. And I mean, the indie scene is a great route to be in again, because you can do with the indie scene, you have room to grow. You have room to mess up. You have room to um, 
just try things just yeah. trial and error more so than a big production you only have so many chances it's like okay well you made these three movies and they all bombed out of your three ideas that you had and you might have a list of 50 ideas but it's like if you're doing something indie independent say you have a group say you have like a handful of friends like listen this is what i want to do let's just do these movies something's going to eventually stick something's mm-hmm. going to stick and another thing is with the indie scene you could do like a five 10 15 20 minute short and just kind of see like what do you guys think of this you know what i mean like hey what do you guys think of this and kind of go from there man so mm-hmm. i the sky's the limit with the indie scene i really do feel like that and i feel like a lot of people that are in indie whether it be granted it might be 10 20 30 years from now probably maybe sooner too though because with this whole everybody has all this technology at, i mean your damn phone you can record a lot of stuff nowadays Right. Everybody has this technology in their hands to where I, it's going to be up there to where I'm not going to say it's going to be battle in Hollywood just because of finances, but there's going to be time, which it's probably already happened. I'm sure it has where you guys are going to have better movies than what's coming out in Hollywood. So people are going to be like, why the fuck am I going to go here and watch this movie where I can watch this indie? I can back this movie right here with my mm-hmm. $30 and watch this masterpiece versus this shit you guys just throw on screen because you know we're going to pay for it. Like, these mm-hmm. people actually care about it because you're a fan. Like, you're a fan of horror. You're a fan of filmmaking. That's why you want to do it. I'm not saying people that aren't in filmmaking up above aren't, but I feel like once it gets to a certain pay grade, it's like, okay, well, we are going to hire you, 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 and you to do this movie, and this is the script. This mm-hmm. is what we're doing kind of thing. Cause, and here's the, here's your money. Here's your boatloads of money. Get it done. Right. Versus someone like you where it's like, I want to make this. I'm a fan of this genre. I want to make something that I know other fans of this genre would appreciate. And I hope one day I do have that opportunity. You will. You appreciate that. You got You. And I say that because again, I don't want to say it out loud now because I don't know when this episode is dropping. But I say that because of you're not a person who will turn down even a tiny, even a small opportunity. Like mm-hmm. we, again, like what we discussed, and I feel like that is a good route to go because you never know where these little opportunities can take you and how they'll grow. And I mean, as far as certain opportunities, you know, certain people with certain opportunities might have a certain fan base, so to speak, that you may or may not have, but because they're fans of this person or because they're fans of people that are working with this person is like, you know what? He's working with these guys. Let me check him out too. And that's how you, that that's a good way to grow. It's a good way to grow the community and all this other good stuff. And it's going to happen, man. Just give it some time. Don't give up on it. <laughs> Don't give up on your dream. Uh, never. That's good. I like never, that. Never. Don't give up on that. And I really do feel you could do, you could definitely make a better movie than Halloween three. Oh, thank you. Uh, you know what? I and- do believe you. <laughs> <laughs> no seriously like I, I do i do believe that this isn't a bad movie to me though like it really isn't but i feel i'm sure if i was just like yo tom listen i have i don't have a movie idea i just want you to do some these are three masks i want to be a big part of this movie just write something up just make something awesome but make these masks like important in this movie one way or another and i'm sure you can come up with a really good idea thank you I do again I do appreciate that. <laughs> I do. But just because the conversation again, the conversation we had even here, you're just like, okay, here's you know, this is what I would have done different. <laughs> this is why I don't like this shit. It's it's you know, I could see why people like this movie. It's just not for me. I, I yeah. think. You know what it is? It's one of those it's like one of the, it's a cult classic, definitely. And it's one of those movies where you just kind of throw it on, turn your brain off. You don't really have to pay attention to it. You really don't have to pay attention to this movie. You could be doing other things, you know, messing around with your phone a little bit, playing cards with your wife or whatever. Mm -hmm. Whatever the case may be, you don't have to put your full focus to it. You can pay attention to it here and there, especially if you've seen it a few times where you're just like, okay, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to see this part. And I'm fine with that. I don't feel like there's anything wrong with movies that are like that because I feel you do. You need movies like that in a sense because it's just like, okay, let me just throw something on for background. For sure. Type of thing just to kind of shit like when i edit i'll throw on i'll throw on like pot i mean i'm listening to them but i'll throw on podcasts because i don't have to watch it i'll throw on certain things i don't have to really watch it and i can edit and be fine and just kind of get in my zone and this is one of those kind of movies where you can kind of throw on when you're editing or, or whatever the case may be this is one of those type of movies again i did enjoy it and i do it i like the masks a lot 
I really do. As simple as they are, I mm-hmm. like it a lot. And I think that's one thing that really does stand out for me. I do like how they have the little powers to what they do. I just wish it was a little different. I don't know how yet, but I just kind of wish they could have did better. <laughs> I'll just say uh, that. I think, I think the story itself is convoluted, to say the least. They, they, when, when the, I, for, I don't know the actor's name. Um, I um, had maybe older guy, uh, yeah. main antagonist. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. Uh, when he's like, oh, we, we stole a piece of stone head. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> yeah. This, I, you know what it is, though? This movie was definitely rushed. We could, we could probably both agree on that. <laughs> probably. They were just like, you know what, man? We want to do a different story. I know you don't want to. Or you want to do a different story, but we don't want you to. And he's just like, you know, I'll do a different story. Here it is. Boom. <laughs> and yeah. And then we got Halloween 4 and all the rest of them. So I guess that's a good thing. But I do, again, going back real quick. Last time I'll say this. I do kind of, jumping off your idea, in an alternate universe, kind of wish I could have seen what would have happened if this movie did work. Yeah. To where they had Halloween 4, 5, 6, 7, and whatever else. But at the same time, I'm glad that Michael Myers is around, like a big icon that he is. Me too. I, I, I am too. I, I just wish that... Fuck it. We already have like four timelines in this franchise. Just make another one. It's fine. I mean, <laughs> I would even like to see a horror franchise start out with... Which, even with indie people, like say... Uh, I can't even think of a title. I don't want to say Halloween. Let's just say it's called Trick or Treat or something or Scary Movie, Spooky Movie. And every year, a different team works on that, like of independent artists works mm-hmm. on it. They Say, for example, this year was your year to do it. You know, you had a full, you know, you had plenty of time, but this year was your year for it to come out. And it can either be a full, a full length feature or just like three different stories every year that come out from three different independent artists every year. And, you know, like an anthology, they don't have to connect, but like three different stories every year around Halloween. And I, I think fans would eat it up. I really do. I think fans would have a great freaking time with it. Mm-hmm. Similar to where um, Saw. Remember how Saw was always coming out around Halloween? I know it's a different yeah. story, but I'm just saying like similar to that, how it comes out around the same time every year. Let's just say the last Friday in October, just to make it easy. Last Friday in October or Saturday, depending on how it's released. And just different stories every year. That way you're getting different creators having all these stories to the point to where it's like, holy shit, this is, this is really cool. And maybe do it for like three years, three, four years or something. So when people want to go buy the box set of it, they can get those movies where they have, you know, 20 different stories or whatever the case may be. I think that'd be fun. And I yeah, think I it's possible too. to do it to where you can even do it on YouTube or something. Honestly, I really feel like that can happen. Yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely something maybe to make happen. Yeah, hey. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. The sky's the limit. Mm-hmm. I think, actually, I think beyond the sky's the limit. But um, I think that would be a really fun thing to do. And really quick, let's jump into the ratings of this Halloween 3 movie. I do a new rating system from the last time I recorded with you. Real, real quick, I just want to say, oh. the ending of this movie, I do love <laughs> When he's yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, That's I love how it just ends. Hey, you know, it's funny as when I'm finishing this movie because well, I haven't watched this movie in a couple of years. My wife was watching it with me on and off, and the way it ended, she's like, "It really ended like that." Like <laughs> she was disappointed. Mm-hmm. For me, it didn't bother me too much. I didn't. It was it was fun, but I do a um a negative ten to a positive ten now, and the reason why I do that is I watched a movie called Blood Lake, which. I'm not recommending you to watch it, but I think you should watch it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's a sl- there's two of them. There's Blood Lake. There's like a water one. It's called like something with the lampreys. And there's one, the one I'm really talking about, though, it's Blood Lake. Um, it's supposed to be like a slasher thing. It's on Tubi. It's called Blood Lake. And the cover of the movie looks like a, a fat Freddy holding a highlighter. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> like when you see the cover, you're just going to be like, I see what he's talking. I see why he said that. But yeah, so... I'm not recommending it, but I want. I would like to hear your thoughts on that movie. <laughs> I would love to hear your thoughts on that movie. Oh, all right. But, um, yeah, so that's why I do negative 10 to a positive 10, and then I always try to pull something out of it. So I'll say 
from a negative 10 to a positive 10, how many silver shamrocks would you give this movie? Gosh, I mean, negative 10 being the worst. I, I, I would put it in the, I would put it in the positive. It would. Um, you don't have to. <laughs> I, w- I would. I would, because I could see the merit here. Yeah. Five. five. But then you got the negative stuff, so I feel like five's really high. <laughs> but, so let's, let's go four. Let's, let's, let's four. <laughs> four silver shamrocks. I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a six. Okay. Like, I don't love this movie. Um, It's something I can watch maybe once a year, maybe twice. But again, oh, like, no. honestly, the only you know, oh, no. the reason I watched the movie this time was because of a podcast. But I, I can probably watch this movie once or twice a year, possibly. I probably won't watch it again this year. <laughs> mm-hmm. Unless my wife and I decide to go through like the whole franchise, which we we might even just skip this and go like one, two, four through the rest. And then, mm-hmm. you know. but yeah, it's, it's definitely not the greatest movie I've ever seen. It's fun. It's one of those cult classics. It's... One of those movies, again, you don't have to pay attention to or you, if you smoke marijuana or you drink alcohol, get a nice buzz and throw it on and enjoy yourself. That's, mm-hmm. best I can, that's the best way I can say it. It's the that, best thing somebody could say about it, I think. I feel like you gave it a high... The way you're saying this, man, I feel like you could, you could have easily given it like a, a negative one and been... Nah, nah. That's that, I'm not, yeah, I don't think I'm that harsh. I am. <laughs> okay, well... I am, but uh, no, it's each their own with that stuff. But no, it it was again, it was a fun watch for me. I know you didn't have the greatest time with it, but like I said, have a little have a little sip if you drink when you watch it again, and let me know what you think about it when you watch it when you're kind of buzzed and you're just like, oh shit! Now if you're still bored, buzzed, or high, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> then you might want to drop that rating down a little bit. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, man, I had a good time with this. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for doing oh, this. Thank you. I know we're definitely going to be doing this again a lot. Yeah, I think we have something in the works already. Oh, hell yeah, we do. But um, if you want to plug your YouTube channel and all that and any other things you want to plug, feel free to go right ahead, man. Well, I uh, I, I do movie reviews um, on my YouTube channel, the Flying Turkey Network. Uh, and we do other stuff. I That's where all my short films and stuff come out. I'm trying to do more in-depth things uh, soon for that i also do uh i do twitch i do editing live streams so i edit all my videos live and like chat with people so that's a that's thomas underscore yazer um on twitch so follow me there too you know awesome that's that's uh, that's really cool and when you get a chance send me those links and when i put this episode out i'll you know put them with this episode appreciate it (laughs) Excuse me. Oh, anytime, man. Anytime. And then really quick, people, Horror Resource 30 on Facebook. I have a Facebook group. Feel free to share anything and everything horror-related, including your own projects, as long as it's horror-related. Funny pictures, funny memes, podcasts, whatever it is, horror-related, 100%, go ahead. I have a Horror Resource 30 podcast page, Horror Resource 30 page on Facebook. That's strictly for my podcast. I'll drop all my episodes of my podcast on there. Um, Any videos I do, I drop on there and on the other one, but the podcast strictly goes just on the podcast page now, audio and video. Any updates, whenever updates start to happen, which there's some things in the works, which I might start announcing on the Horror Search 30 page. or some things in the works. And, yeah, so there's that. I also have a Twitch, which I game on when I get a chance to. I'm going to try to start gaming more. I have to get a couple of things so I can have, like, my whole camera set up, like how this is with the game, though. But uh, it's horror underscore with underscore sir underscore 30. Um, let me see my YouTube channel, Horror Research 30, anywhere you can listen to podcasts, Horror Research 30, you know, um, what is it? What the fuck, man? <laughs> I can't even think of their club. <laughs> Spotify, Podbean, Google Play, all the other ones in between, all the ones that are sprinkled in, you should be able to hear me. And then, like I said, my YouTube channel, if you ever want to be a guest, shoot me an email, sturdy at gmail.com. Again, that's horrorresearch.sturdy at gmail.com. Come on and review a movie. Come on and talk about your projects. As long as it's horror related, it's cool. I'll tell you guys that one more time. Horror research, horror research dot sturdy at gmail.com. Go check out Tom's stuff. He's I'm telling you that he's gonna be doing some dope shit very, very, very soon. 
And but very, very, very soon. It could be like a year or two from now, but that's still very, very, very soon, people. But he's I got some stuff cool. in the works. For he sure. has some stuff in the works. We've been talking behind the scenes a lot. And he's someone you're gonna want to look out for because you want to see these people. Like I'm the type of person I love watching people grow from like the beginning and then kind of go up. So you guys better tune in now because once he's blown up, fuck all of you guys. If you ain't looking, if you ain't watching, if you're not, if you're not here for the beginning, you know what? You're gonna, you're gonna miss out. That's all I'm saying. I'm not gonna say fuck you guys. I take that back. But you're gonna miss out. So we, I'm telling you guys, definitely check him out. A lot of people that I work with are some dope people, some dope artists, and they do some dope stuff. So check them out because I'm telling you, stuff's going to start skyrocketing. I'm just saying it. I'm just saying it. But again, man, thank you for coming on. I had a great, great freaking time as usual. Thank you. And to everybody out there, as always, I'll see you in your nightmare.